we, yep, we parked the RV at this vacant place here. There's nobody here. You can see this old home, old shop. It's a pretty exciting day for us because in about 45 minutes, we're going to sign the papers to close on this house and shop and 26 acres in Big Sandy, Tennessee. It's the start of a new chapter for us. We've got a lot of work inside, outside, on the house, on the shop, and on all of the acreage. So lots of trees, 26 acres, we got a creek. Our channel, Pause on Effect, will continue. Full-time travel will not continue. We'll still travel but no longer full-time but we will be full-time living in the rv until we get this house ready for us to move in so again tune back in hear all we're going to do to fix up this house give us some of your feedback right below and what can you expect from the channel going forward well of course full-time rv living with our dogs so we'll do plenty of dog focused content we'll show you all around this new town that we're going to explore big sandy tennessee which is just a half a mile from kentucky lake we'll also have plenty of motorcycle footage and again some travel footage we're going to port aransas texas to do some beach cleanups and stuff in january um, so what can you expect new from the channel well of course some diy on not only the repairs and remodel of a house, but also some of the furnishings. So Chris is gonna get into some uh, purchase of old furniture, refinishing it for our house, and also possibly selling it as well. So we have to hit the road now and go close. So Chris is gonna load up the dogs. We're gonna go close on this. All right, so it's ours. We closed. Chris had to take uh, Peyton to a archery tryout at her middle school they now live around 45 50 minutes from us so we're close to um, our daughter and three of our grandkids our other daughter one of our other daughters lives in Milan which is just about an hour away and that's two more of her grandkids so we're closer to our grandkids the majority of our grandkids than we've been in some time um, so um, we've got the place and now the work begins so first part of the work was just setting up the RV so uh, got the RV nice and level got it up on blocks because it's gonna be sitting there for a while got the water hooked up electric hooked up right now I've just got it hooked to 20 amp temporarily until we get a, a 30 or 50 amp I'm gonna actually put in a permanent 50 amp to it but we've got to get the electrical service upgraded so a couple of the first things that we're doing here are coming up uh, this Saturday we're going to upgrade 200 amps from electrical service so that I can put a 50 amp drop off onto the uh, RV for an RV pad over there. So that will be, that's what we'll be working on uh, before it gets freezing, which is probably about six weeks away, four to six weeks away. So we're going to be working on that pretty hard. Um, another thing that we're going to do right away, we already got the estimates before we close, is on the roof. So the roof, uh, this whole property uh, was actually built by the in-laws of the person that that uh, lived here so we bought it from the lady who lived here her in-laws lived right across the street or did um, i think the father-in-law has passed and the mother-in-law is moved um, out uh, into a nursing home or is ill and may not come home to the house across the street but he actually built this house so the house is built not to any type of codes uh, and there is some work that needs to be done but it's actually a nice little country home um, but we're going to have to do quite a bit of work to it. So the roof, uh, he put the roof on himself as well. It's a metal roof. We love the metal roof. So we've got a, uh, a friend of mine coming out to um, to do the metal roof. And professional uh, roofer that has his own metal roofing company. And we're going to get this roof done right so there's no more leaking issues. Uh, another thing that we're going to do is um, actually put in the RV pad. So... Uh, we'll put in the RV pad. We're going to um, actually dig a hole here, trench a hole once I get our tractor, which I'm going to go order tomorrow. I'm going to get a couple of Kubota tractors for the property here. We're actually going to dig a line from the septic, which we believe is around in this area, um, over towards 
the driveway and put in a dump station over there for the RV. Probably four to six weeks before we get all that done, probably. Um, just because of timing, It'll take us a week or two to get the tractor. It'll take us a while to get those lines in the ground, um, get the service upgraded. It's probably gonna take us a week, week and a half to get the inspections done. Um, but we're gonna get going on it. That's the first few things that we've got going here on our new property, 26 acres. So stick around. We'll show you the work as it's getting done. It should be a whole lot of fun. Oh, and actually a little backstory here. The, uh, the, the lady that lived here, unfortunately, she loved this property and she just got too old to take care of it. Uh, she has a daughter in Nashville. And so um, she moved to Nashville, but she really wanted to find somebody to uh, give this property. Unfortunately, it's kind of a heartbreak story because uh, her husband of many years uh, ran off, ran off with a, a woman in another country and uh, left her by herself to take care of this, this home and property. So um, kind of a sad situation, but it worked out uh, to our benefit. We got uh, what we think is a really good deal on the property. Obviously there's a ton of work. That's probably why, uh, why we got the deal. But basically we were looking for raw property, as many of you know, to build a house and uh, property is outrageous right now. Properties, and actually a lot of houses are. Um, we, we spent a lot of time looking at uh, houses throughout Tennessee and uh, even over towards Knoxville, Seaverville. Obviously they're more expensive there for land. But we looked at some land right here uh, on Kentucky Lake and we had quite a few spots that we liked that were 10, 20, 30 acres and they were averaging, it seemed around three to $5,000 an acre. Uh, and so, you know, with 26 acres here, we got it for just around that same price. But in this case, it comes with a, uh, a shop and, uh, and a home. Uh, obviously, the home's gonna need a lot of work. Uh, we're gonna get started, like I said, with the roof, the electrical, and, uh, and the RV pad. Those are the top things. And then at some point, we're gonna dig into the uh, remodel on the inside, which is basically gonna be a complete gut of the inside of the house. That's why we got the RV set up here. We're gonna be living in the RV uh, through the winter into the spring while we do that work. We'll probably disappear for about a month and go to Port Aransas, Texas, and uh, get some beach time. And uh, we hope you come back and enjoy some of the great footage we're gonna have on what we do with this home here in Big Sandy, Tennessee. All right, so we've uh, just closed on this place. Not the motorhome that I'm in, but the property that the motorhome is sitting on. We just closed on 26 acres, as you know. And uh, we've got a bit of a problem, so I'll show you the problem here in a second. We knew this because the inspector told us this before, but it's water pressure. So let's take a look at the water pressure, what we're going to do to fix the water pressure. So you see the water pressure is, uh, you know, not exactly horrible, but I wouldn't want to take a shower in this. So you can see it's uh, not really a trickle, but just a little bit more than a trickle. But definitely not the flow that you want. Um, in the RV, so everything will be a bit of a pain, especially taking a shower. So we're going to go in the house. I'll show you what it looks like there. So I checked, uh, checked the line going from the house to the RV, just make sure there are no kinks. Um, and as I said, we already knew um, we had a little bit of a cold water, water pressure issue. We're on a well, and there are some things you can do to adjust the water pressure. We're going to hope some, some of those things work, and we'll show you what we do as we do it and what the results are. All right, so here in the kitchen sink here, we're gonna turn on the cold water. You can see not much of a flow. It gets a little better when you uh, put it on that sprayer. Those sprayers are pretty good, oxygenics type uh, faucets. Now the hot water is, is perfect, but the hot water is running through the hot water heater and getting pressure on the line from that. So cold water, not much there. All right, so um, we haven't really made any adjustments yet. Um, but I wanted to put on the pressure regulator to see where it's at. It's right around, looks to be about 36 uh, pounds of pressure, um, which isn't horrible, but it's about what you expect in a, uh, with a well potentially, uh, 40 to 60 pounds maybe. So let's see if we can get this uh, rocking a little bit better with some adjustments. You can see here our water pressure gauge it at the pump the water pump says about the same thing 36 pounds of pressure 
So now what we can do, what can we do to uh, increase that? So you'll see a, a, a air valve here where you can take and check your actual pressure. So it should be very similar to the pressure of the tank that you see from the, uh, the actual gauge down here, which is around 36. But what you can do first is just uh, check that with a tire pressure gauge. Just put your gauge on there and test that puppy. Let's see what our gauge says here. And yep, it's uh, it's showing around 32 here, so um, run in line with what that is. Now you'll see this little box here. Now I highly recommend that you shut the power off um, to your pump, shut the breakers off inside. But basically um, the reason to do that is because your adjustments are these two nuts and you don't necessarily want to be, uh, these adjustments is right here, these two nuts. So you want the power to be off. We have not turned our power off here yet. Um, Obviously, if you're brave, you can stick a, uh, a, a wrench in there and, and, um, and, and tighten or loosen those nuts to adjust presser. Now, inside the little cap, this is going to have a little cap on it, usually the black or gray. And you just loosen that little nut to get this cap off. Once you get it off, there is a diagram on the inside. And this diagram is going to tell you which nut to change to raise or lower pressure. So it says turn nut one. CW to raise, cut on and off pressure. The cut on and off pressure are basically the pressure where the pump will come on. Uh, two is turn a nut to raise off pressure only. I'm gonna adjust this uh, 7 sixteenths, or actually this is a 3 eighths inch nut here. And adjust it a few turns see what that changes okay so what we've done we've adjusted both screws a bit okay so what you want to want to do when you adjust these there's no real setting on there to tell you where you're at uh, but typically the manufacturer from what I hear has um, what you see here which are pressure setting switch 20 to 40 30 to 50 40 to 60 So what that means on that pressure setting number one, which is the one with the tall bolt, the tall um, bolt right here, that nut, that's my pressure setting number one. That's the cut in switch. And basically what that does is it determines what the pressure's at when the switch kicks on and then where it's going to kick off at. So our highest setting is 40, 60. It was kicking on at 20 and shutting off at 40. That's why our pressure was in the 30s. Uh, I have adjusted that cut in switch and now it is basically um, kicking on, I think around 30 and going all the way up to 60 or so. So it's not exactly accurate with that, but that's what you wanna watch after you make your adjustments is what your pressure is doing. And so I'll let you see what this looks like when it kicks on here in just a second. We've got some water running inside you just turn a faucet on so that it bleeds the pressure down. So your pressure is going to range high at the start and then get less as you're running the faucet. It's not going to keep a perfect pressure. So that came on just a little bit below 40 as you can see. And that's going to crank up. It's supposed to shut off at 60, but I think it goes a little over 60 before it shuts off. Yeah, it's going almost all the way up to 70. Now let's go inside and see what that looks like. That should be the highest setting per the instruction manual there. Our flow is quite a bit better with cold water. So we'll go ahead and shut that off. And we can see here on our pressure regulator on our hose, we've actually got around 58 or 60 of pressure. So that's quite a bit better pressure and should uh, make our showers much better. So that's how you increase your pressure on a home well system. Much, much more to come from the, uh, the new Solomon Homestead here in Big Sandy, Tennessee.